For week 10, we'll have our two lectures. One lecture will be on equine therapy, which will relate to our lab this week. And then the second lecture will be on equine reproduction. For equine therapy, I'm going to start and give an overview of equine welfare and integrated veterinary medicine. And then we'll talk about a facility that I was given the opportunity to tour in Lampasas, Texas, Equicare. And we'll talk about a couple of different methods of equine therapy that they offer at their facility. And then we'll finish up with um, going through and introducing what we will be doing for lab this week. Lab this week is going to be a guest, um, a guest speaker from the industry, and she is going to come in um, and perform some therapy techniques on our horses at the school um, and explain to you what she does um, as far as her business model. So for those of you interested in continuing within the equine industry or those of you who may be interested in opportunities available um, through equine therapy. So Claire will be there to answer a number of questions and provide a demonstration on her day-to-day -day work as it relates to um, equine therapy techniques. To get this lecture started, um, I want to talk about integrative veterinary medicine. Um, integration is defined as the act of combining something into an integral whole with the implication that the whole functions smoothly and is greater than the sum of the parts. Clinical integration occurs when diverse disciplines, um, so relating to um, the equine industry, this could include veterinarians, um, physical therapists, trainers, and farriers working together in the best interest and for the welfare of the equine patient. Um, human integrated medicine promotes the use of both conventional medical care and the adaptation of some complementary and alternative medicine concepts. So these are what we can refer to as CAMs or CAMs. Um, CAMs can include prevention, diet, exercise, and emotional and spiritual health. Integrative medicine offers a physiology, physiology that focuses on health and healing instead of disease and technology and an emphasis on the central role of the patient-practitioner relationship, respect of the client's preferences, and intentional um, activation of the body's innate healing capabilities. Integrative veterinary medicine is not only limited to conventional or evolving medical or surgical approaches, but also incorporates the diagnostic and therapeutic offerings of equine chiropractic, acupuncture, physical therapy, therapy, and other unconventional medical approaches that are not routinely taught um, within the veterinarian curriculum, but are widely considered encompassed under the umbrella of CAMS. Uh, many of these techniques have been borrowed from human medicine because of their perceived therapeutic effectiveness and applied to horses with the goal of achieving some of the same um, benefits or effects. There are a wide variety of terms used to describe complementary and alternative therapies, some of which include non-traditional, unconventional, unproven, and non-evidence-based. Um, rightly or wrongly, many of the applied terms have negative connotations, which often do not accurately represent what CAM is or what it has to offer to veterinary medicine. Um, the term integrative veterinary medicine more accurately encompasses the intent and activities of most veterinarians or sports medicine practitioners who provide complementary or alternative therapies within their equine practices. Integrative veterinary medicine provides a framework for incorporating any form of diagnostic or therapeutic um, that demonstrates some level of evidence of being both safe and effective in managing a specific disease process or improving general equine welfare. Um, the premise of doing all that you reasonably can do often requires us to extend our current knowledge base, pursue training or continuing education in new and evolving fields, and consulting with or referring to colleagues who have pursued specialized um, postgraduate training in these select fields, or confer with um, individual counterparts who are willing to participate um, and 
complicated and unique um, procedures. Integrative medicine encourages the use of the scientific process um, to investigate novel diagnosis and therapeutic procedures and does not condone the application of untested therapies. It is critical that we validate all diagnostic procedures, therapeutic techniques, and management practices for clinical eff efficacy in improving well-being or managing disease processes that negatively impact equine welfare. Um, aside from looking at the integrative veterinary medicine and these CAMs, um, there's also a, a simple concept that comes up that I think oftentimes is overlooked and is very, very important, and all of us can apply this in our day-to-day -day interaction um, with school horses and also our personal horses. But additional components of integrative medicine include principles and practices of equitation science and horsemanship. Um, this can include proper tack fit and use, riding techniques, um, different working or racing services, or surfaces, behavior, and any other field or area of interest that may directly impact a horse's health and well-being. To further expand on this, um, poor saddle fit is considered one of the leading causes of back pain in horses. However, yet it remains the rather exclusive dominant, um, it remains the rather exclusive domain of experienced saddlers and the basics of good versus bad saddle fit are rarely taught um, in any veterinarian school or further education um, in higher education. Um, the same can be said of improperly um, used or poor fitting saddle pads, bits, bridles, reins, draw reins, harnesses, or any um, use of any restrictive device that is used to overcome the horse's natural desire to avoid pain or alter gait associated with lameness. Um, it is largely agreed upon by professionals that different um, riding surfaces, proper shoeing, hoof care, riding abilities and technique, as well as dental health affect athletic performance and are critical to the welfare of the horse. Um, however, none of these topics are covered in any useful degree in most veterinarian um, school curriculum. Um, in fact, the entire field of equine sports medicine has largely developed outside of academia within specialty practices and only recently have a few academic institutions incorporated or offered some of the services related to a successful sports medicine practice. Um, in the absence of any obvious um, blockable lameness or um, conclusive diagnostic imaging findings, findings uh, what does a practitioner who is limited to prescribing medications or performing surgeries have to offer a client who complains of reduced performance in the elite equine athlete? Um, oftentimes, they are forced to inform clients to come back when the condition worsens. Um, this is just one situation where the equine evaluation and diagnostic procedures associated with many integrative medicine approaches can make a um, beneficial contribution to equine welfare. So keep that in mind as we talk about some of these different techniques um, throughout this lecture. When considering traditional veterinary medicine, primarily focused um, its efforts on improving equine welfare by providing pain relief. Um, as a result, we now have a wide selection of pharmaceutical agents designed to manage acute pain. However, unfortunately, relatively few um, effectively address chronic pain or muscle um, hypertonicity. Um, most acute soft tissue and orthopedic injuries are readily managed medically or surgically and resolved without any residual adverse effects. Um, however, there are some injuries or disease processes that do not completely resolve and many produce chronic pain, persistent uh, muscle hypertonicity, stiffness, and altered gait pattern that cannot be eliminated even with aggressive or long-term medical or surgical management. Um, veterinary medicine in this aspect lacks the proven and effective methods to reverse or manage the long-term adverse effects of joint immobilization, altered um, gait, 
compensatory gait tissue, muscle weakness or atrophy, and the other undefined causes of poor performance. Um, however, when we compare this to the human field of sports medicine, physical therapy, occupational therapy, exercise physiology, um, sports psychology, manual therapy, and athletic training, they have unique tools and approaches to address many of these similar issues in elite human athletes. However, currently in the equine industry, um, there's a lack of formal training, clinical experience, and a strong body of equine-specific um, scientific evidence to support the use of these novel evaluation or treatment techniques, which are used routinely in human rehabilitation, but haven't been thoroughly evaluated for the rehabilitation of equine athletes. Um, borrowing from these human applications, integrative veterinary medicine has the potential to provide safe and effective approaches for musculoskeletal and neurological rehabilitation of both acute and chronic pain, um, flexibility, strength, and endurance in the horse. Uh, practitioners are continuously faced with uncertainty. In an ideal world, all of our diagnostic tests would be 100% accurate and all proposed therapies would be 100% safe and effective. As well as 100% of clients, um, they would work, and as applied, 100% of practitioners. Um, unfortunately, our horses sometimes have vague or unusual clinical presentations or unexpected adverse reactions to medication or surgical treatments. Um, one important reason why alternative and complementary therapies exist and have entered the equine practice is that typical medications or procedures are not always effective um, or are effective without unwanted effects. Um, all medications have specific indications and a single drug or surgical procedure can rarely address all of the issues associated with a single, um, a single disease process. As we begin considering the use of CAM therapies, um, it is certainly possible that providing untested CAM therapies, practitioners are um, depriving horses and owners of other more effective or tested therapies. Um, however, until well-designed research studies are conducted to evaluate the efficacy of both proven and unproven therapies for scientific um, disease conditions together in randomized controlled um, trials, then there is little evidence to know one way or the other if an untested technique will provide poor quality um, or ineffective treatment. That is, of course, unless a specific treatment um, modality or proposed um, therapy has no theoretical evidence for biological activity. Um, one of the first tenets of an organized medicine is, above all, do no harm. Unfortunately, we often induce pain or discomfort with many of the medical or surgical procedures used in equine practice. However, the induced pain or suffering is judged clinically to be worth the potential benefits gained from the procedure. With regards to CAM, a risk for induced pain or suffering also exists, but the prevalence or severity of those risks is largely unknown since many have not been formally tested for unwanted or adverse effects in the horse. Um, therefore, a clinically useful benefit versus risk analysis cannot be determined for many of these therapies. In humans, however, adverse effects of acupuncture, chiropractic, physical therapy, and other rehabilitative practices have been reported. Although currently we can only um, presume that similar reactions also occur to some extent in horses that are exposed to these same treatments. Um, so in going through this, I, I don't want you to think at all that I'm saying that traditional veterinary medicine doesn't have benefit. Um, there is definitely benefit in a place for traditional veterinary medicine. Um, what I really want to focus on throughout this lecture is that there is opportunity to the, um, use the complementary and alternative medicine, the CAMs. 
there is opportunity where we can integrate um, traditional veterinary medicine and then use of the CAMs, um, using them together, so integrating them to have the greatest benefit for our equine athlete. Um, so that's really what I want to instill and focus on throughout this lecture. From this point forward, I will be talking about a couple of techniques that I evaluated at Equicare. Equicare is a equine rehabilitation facility in Lampasas, Texas. Um, as far as conditioning and recovery from injury and scheduled downtime, this can all be effectively done at home given the appropriate time, knowledge, and equipment. However, utilizing a rehab or conditioning facility with knowledgeable and trained staff can be a better option for those that don't have the ability or the time to condition or rehab a horse at home. These facilities will typically have equipment that an owner will not have access to at a home facility. Um, this may include a cold spa, an underwater treadmill, a pool, an above ground treadmill, a track, a therapeutic laser, um, a vibrating plate, um, pulsed electromagnetic field therapy, and numerous other options and devices. A combination of these different methods can be used depending on the condition and goals of the individual horse and owner. Communication between your veterinarian and those customizing the conditioning or rehab plan is an important aspect of getting the most out of the time spent at one of these facilities. Um, so that being said, when would be the appropriate time to use a rehabilitation facility? The most obvious time would be when a horse is recovering from an injury. Um, working with a veterinarian, the facility may be able to utilize um, specific models to facilitate the healing process or safely bring the horse back into condition. Another benefit in the recovery process is the use of aquatic therapies. Um, aquatic therapies um, reduce the load on the tendons and joints, and this is a result of buoyancy. The underwater treadmill pictured here um, can be utilized for conditioning um, a recovering horse long before it would be appropriate to start riding them. Um, at Equicare, they have an aqua tread or an underwater treadmill, which is a great way to bring horses back from injury as well as provide an intense level of conditioning without all of the strain and stress on the tendons and ligaments. The treadmill at this facility is 12 foot long, allowing space and comfort for a horse when they are learning the ropes. This exercise takes 60% of their body weight off of their legs while allowing them to build up good aerobic capacity. So that's very key. Because of the buoyancy of the water, um, they are actually reducing or taking 60% of their body weight off of their legs, um, allowing them to continue to build conditioning, um, but reducing the load on those tendons and joints while doing so. Um, a little bit of a contrast or maybe a comparison, but difference um, would be using a pool which may also be used for cardiovascular and muscular conditioning. However, when free swimming a horse, it is hard on their back and stifles and does not provide um, any feedback or ground reaction force that is vital for strengthening of bone, tendons, as well as ligaments. Um, because of this reason, it should be combined with the appropriate groundwork in most cases. So that is saying when you're free swimming a horse and they're swimming in the pool, um, they do not have that direct contact with the ground. And so just free swimming a horse isn't going to be a standalone. You're going to want to make sure that you um, combine that with appropriate groundwork to see the, see the level of success that is desired. Um, another great use for these equine rehabilitation facilities is utilizing the aquatic therapies to exercise the sound aged horse. Um, for example, the use of the underwater treadmill, um, and you can also reduce impact on the joints and decrease inflammation um, by use of other techniques. Um, of course, any age horse is going to benefit from such a program. Um, so not only can these aquatic therapies be used 
um, in a horse that already has injury, but can also be used um, preventative measurally. Um, next, this is also a photograph um, from Equicare with a horse that is using the cold um, salt um, hydrotherapy. Um, a cold salt hydrotherapy is used to treat and prevent a multitude of injuries in 35 degrees Fahrenheit salt water. Um, the spa has successfully addressed virtually all lower leg injuries. Treatment temperature um, alone induces a massive rush of blood and circulation, which otherwise would not be present. Um, this is a drug-free therapy that can be used for injury prevention and also to increase mobility and reduce the swelling in limbs before and after competitive events and training. Um, in looking at this photograph, you can see um, that this horse does have a strap across its shoulder. Um, when these horses enter this um, saltwater um, therapy, their the gates can be open to allow the horse to walk in. So clearly, there's no water um, fill at this time. After the horse has been walked into um, the stall, then it can be closed, and then the water begins to fill. Um, as far as while the horse is in there, um, horses we we don't have them trained where we can tell them when we want them. Um, to go to the restroom. So they do um, have a strap on, on this horse where if they are um, to urinate or defecate while they're in, the, um, in this uh, treatment method that it will catch it. Um, so that's just the carryover there. There's not any other secondary um, apparatus that goes on the horse when they enter the saltwater spa. Um, that strap is just there to um, catch the feces if they are um, to do so while they're in this treatment. The next type of equine therapy is incline treadmill. The incline treadmill is designed to duplicate anaerobic work for your horse in a controlled environment. So what exactly does this mean? This means that we can prepare the horse's muscles to fire and sprint without the stress and the risk of injury that they have in a typical home environment while training. It helps, helps to build up the hind end, the stifles and hocks, as well as elevating the horse's heart rate. The treadmill will incline up to 11 degrees and maxes out at speeds of 8 miles per hour. This therefore allows the freedom and room to create a special program catered to each individual horse's needs. So I was super excited. Um, I thought I had figured out how to embed YouTube videos into your all's lectures. However, unfortunately, um, when I got ready to convert the PowerPoint to a movie, um, it doesn't allow you to do so. So that being said, I've put a list here of the different videos that I want you all to watch. So these are all um, basically the therapies that we've covered to this point that were observed um, while I was at Equicare's facility. So the videos that you'll need to watch, there's going to be one on the cold salt hydrotherapy, there's going to be one on the um, incline treadmill, and then there is going to be an additional video um, on RLT. RLT is regenerative laser therapy. This is a one of the most recent uh, methods of therapy that is available at Equicare. And it was actually a new tool that they had recently purchased when I visited the facility in 2018. In this video on RLT, it also introduces how Equicare was started, information about the owners, um, and exactly what the mission is at that facility. So it gives a very good overview on the facility and their goals. To get you all set up this week for lab, um, we will be having a guest lecture or demonstration as I discussed. Um, Clara Williams is a longtime friend of mine 
um, but also who's someone who I have worked with um, in a professional manner. She is a recent graduate of Midway and currently owns and operates her own um, equine therapy um, business. It's Springwater Equine Therapy. Um, through her education and hands-on learning, um, she provides six different options of equine therapy. Um, she performs massage therapy. She uses TENS units. She uses ultrasound, K-tape, cold laser therapy, and then equisage therapy. The equisage therapy is very similar um, to use of a theraplate, so keep that in mind um, as she discusses this technique. And I know that the um, the use of the theraplate is, is probably more common in our area um, and mentioned, but keep in mind the similarities between those um, two as she goes throughout her demonstration. You're now ready to complete your week 10A assignment. Don't forget that I did mention those three videos that you need to watch. Um, I will make sure that all three of those videos are uploaded to your week 10A and that you can access those. Um, those videos will be important in helping you to understand the different type of equine therapies that have been covered. The types of equine therapies that I went over in lecture today um, are different than those therapies that Clara is going to be demonstrating and going over in lab on Wednesday. So keep in mind that this isn't going to be um, duplicate material, but that some of these equine therapies can be used um, together, and oftentimes we see the most benefit when different therapies are used in combination and also when the therapy is occurring um, over a period of time. So many of these, um, if we just schedule one session, we're not going to see the desired results. It's going to occur over a period of time.